This week, what we've been working on, we started with resistance and avoidance behaviors and how to identify those. So what are they? These are the things that are keeping you from your goals and how do you identify them? Well, you're gonna look for the things you're resisting, avoiding, or making excuses about. So for example, if you say one of your goals for this year is you wanna be fit, but you're actually not going to the gym, then you, that's something you're resisting, right? You're avoiding it. Or if today's gym day, but you decide to do the dishes and the laundry instead, you're avoiding it. So that's an area that you need to take a look at. So first of all, you have to check, is your compelling story there? It's not just that you wanna get fit, but you know why you wanna get fit. You know what it's gonna feel like when you get fit. You, get fit. you know what it's gonna feel like when you pull, you slide your jeans up and they just slide up over your hips and you don't have to lay down on the bed to like fasten them together because they fit properly. Or when you go to that family reunion or that class reunion, you, you know you look great. You just bought a new outfit. You feel amazing. You know, everything's in where it's supposed to be and nothing's bulging out where it's not supposed to be. You know, you look better than all the people that you went to high school with. Well, you have to have that vision. It needs to be written and you need to sell yourself on that vision every day. So not just how it feels, but why you want that. Because the, the why, and it, preferably if it's for somebody else, like your kids, you know, I wanna be healthy and fit and run around with my kids. I wanna have enough energy in, at the end of the day to be present for my family. You know, there's, there, you've got to know why you wanna do it as well. When you identify those resistance behaviors, you may not have a compelling enough future and, or you may not be selling yourself on it or you may not know the roadmap on your way to that. So there's a, a map. And once you know what it is, you write it out, you know the compelling future, you've got to design the roadmap. So you wanna be fit by such and such date for maybe such and such event, you know why. Now, what's it gonna to take to get there? Well, I'm gonna do you know this many times a week of cardio, this many times a week of weight training, or I'm gonna to go to class this many times a week, or, and I'm gonna do it at this time of the day, and you know, blah, blah, blah. You've gotta have the roadmap to get there, and you have to know what that is, the plan. Because if you don't have a plan, you won't work a plan. So then, you've got the compelling future, you're selling yourself on it, you have the roadmap, and you're still not showing up, you may be breaking through something. So when we're breaking through something, there's something holding us back, a fear or something. So in that case, we have to look at it and say, okay, I want this, this is my compelling future, this is what, why I want it. So I'm gonna take a movement in the right direction. So it can be any small little movement. So even if the plan is to go to the gym six days a week, and do 30 minutes of cardio and 30 minutes of weight training, start with something. Start with, I'm gonna go for a 10 minute walk out the door and 10 minutes back. If you do something that, to move the needle forward, it's actually gonna start the cascade effect of you wanting to do more and more. Anytime we're in resistance, we, if we move forward by doing some activity, it can break through to get us all the fear and all the resistance goes away and it moves, it propels us forward. But then we also wanna attach the dopamine reward system to the process. And the process is that roadmap. So if you have to back down your process to little tiny steps, I'm gonna put my shoes by the front door, I'm gonna lay my clothes out tonight. You know, whatever the little tiny steps are, but you can attach the reward system to that, your dopamine reward system, by saying, okay, this is the roadmap, I'm on the right track. Okay, look, I did that today. I'm on the right track. And I like to have like, I'm gonna at least do this. Ideally, I'd like to do this, but I'm gonna at least do this. So that way, I know I'm still on the right path all the time. And if I'm having a rough day or my time is limited, then I can at least do my, my minimum and still keep moving me forward. So it can even start with just, I'm gonna move my body every day. But if your goal is to be fit, you need to be doing something that's moving the needle that direction. And by attaching the reward to it all along the way, what happens is you actually program your mind and your reward loop system to look forward to pressing into the things you're resisting instead of pulling back from them. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual system in your brain that actually makes a big difference on whether or not you attach the reward to the activity versus the end result because we can't have unlimited energy when we're focused only on the reward at the end and this is what most people do i'll be happy when i'll be happy when i get fit i'll be happy when i get married i'll be happy when i buy the house i'll be happy when i get the job you know you've got to attach the reward every step of the way make the reward as part of the process and if you have questions around that let me know you can either drop them down below you can dm me or you can just jump on here live and we can talk about it together so one of the ways to do that for me is I like to have a checklist and I have daily check, checklists. 
Hey, sunshine, welcome. I'm glad you're here with me. Do you have any questions in particular? Drop them down below if you do, or I can bring you on live with me if you want. So, okay, so map with the compelling future uh, checklist. So a daily checklist. Um, so, and again, this can be, it could just be I'm gonna move my body to get you started. And don't forget the days that you go to the gym when you really, really don't want to are always the best days. They're always the ones that you feel the most proud of, that you have the best workouts, that you feel like you've broken through something. So always, if you, if you don't want to, you must, okay? So checking things off. So this also releases dopamine when you have a list. So if working out is on your list and you actually check it off each day, it actually gives you a little dopamine reward. So you get a little dopamine dump and it makes you feel happy and excited that you accomplished something. So I use checklists to my advantage on everything I do. I have checklists for everything. I'll even put things on the checklist <laughs> to check them off because it literally gives you a dopamine reward. So who doesn't want that? And what does dopamine do? Well, it makes you feel happy. So I want all those little dopamine hits that I can get. Okay, so checking things off. We also talked about creating a, either creating an AM or a PM routine, and those are really for getting up and going to bed. But also, I have a little, a little four thing checklist that I try to do every day, which is make my bed, um, touch up the kitchen wherever it you know, needs to be touched up, whether that's the empty in the dishwasher, actually putting dishes in the dishwasher, starting a load of laundry and straightening in the living room, those four things. If I do those four things every day and I get to check them off, I start my day out with that reward. But I also have meditation daily on my checklist and I have working out on my checklist. I don't get to work out these days all the time because I haven't moved it to a priority or sold myself on a compelling future or made a roadmap yet. So it hasn't become, it hasn't moved up, but it's still on my list because I, I am intentional about creating that as part of my habits and routines this year. So that's that. So let, what else is next? Create the routines. Does anybody out there have routines that you already have? Do you have a morning and evening routine? And let's see, moving the needle towards your big goal. What is your big goal? I will tell you that you, you can't have two really big goals all at one time. So you can't be, I'm gonna build this, this is for you sunshine, I can't be over here building, okay, I'm gonna over here build my side gig and make it grow really big, and I'm gonna uh, compete in a fitness competition this year. Those are two very big things that need a lot of focus and you can't divide your focus that much. We just don't have that much time in a day. So you do have to have one primary focus, have one primary goal, okay? And that is your primary focus. You can do other things that are gonna propel you forward to be healthier or more fit or you know whatever, but your primary focus will be on the bigger picture of maybe building your business or your side gig over here. So with that being said, you wanna do moodle, needle, moodle needing, needle moving activities every day on your big thing. Like that's kind of a non-negotiable. And sometimes, guys, it means just doing something because you can check it off, but you need to do something. Okay, so there's that. So next, day 19, which just got released last night, it was about creating a bedtime routine by lowering the lights, putting out screens, but we talked about literally how our eyes are actually part of our brain that has been pushed out of our skull. And it, it tells us when to be active and when not to be. Spending time outside two hours of sunrise and two hours of sunset will help set that circadian rhythm inside of your body so that you, have, you are more active when you need to be, you are more able to rest when you need to rest, and working on getting out, even if it's just for 10 minutes, both times a day is ideal, but especially if you wanna get a good start in the, in the morning, go outside for 10 minutes in the morning. It's amazing what being out and as the sun is coming up will do for you. So, let's see. And then my thing always, like this has always been my thing, it's, you know, your light should be out by 10, a cool, dark room between 60 and 67 degrees. 65 is the ideal point, actually, for most people. Your room is supposed to be completely dark. This is where all your repair, rejuvenation, detoxification, and replenishing happens. If you go to bed at 11 or 12, you're missing one to two nights every night of repair, rejuvenation, detoxification, and replenishing, and you cannot have a healthy body if you're constantly missing this very important work. So if you are going to bed at 11 or 12, you need to work on moving that needle back and do that in 30 minute, 30 minute increments. So lights out by, by um, if you're going to bed at midnight, move it back to 11.30, make your lights out by 11.30, get to where you're starting to fall asleep at 11.30 and then move it back by 30 minutes again. I also recommend that you set an alarm every morning whether you have to get up or not and make a minimum time that you're willing to stay in bed 
um, because that also helps set your circadian rhythm, preferably around when sun rises because we are designed to go to sleep as the sun goes down and wake up as the sun comes up. And a bonus is if you turn your Wi-Fi off at night, you can get a little timer that turns it off for you automatically. There's no need for those EMFs to be pulsing through our house all night long. We haven't done that, we really need to. And it needs to be high on everybody's priority to just turn it off. You don't need it while you're sleeping. So, okay, any questions? Okay guys, if you have any questions or any comments or we've missed anything or you don't understand anything, make sure to drop the comments below or DM me either way. But if you drop the comments or questions below, everybody can benefit from that. And keep ticking away. You've got all weekend to catch up on the 19 days worth of assignments that have been put out there so far. If you haven't done them, go back and do them. They, sometimes they may look similar, but they actually are layers to, that work intricately with each other and really hone in these systems so they become a part of what you do and who you are so that you can continue not only to crush it now, but crush it whenever you want to. All right, thanks for being here, Sunshine. Bye, everybody. See you soon.